this is you talking to me. Today it's a big day, actually, because it's a historic day, because Mr. Obama, the President of the United States, is coming in Brussels for the first time since 2008, since its elections. And to talk about this, we will talk about more about the EU and US trade talk deal. So with me, I've got one member of the European Parliament, Mrs. Zimmer. Hello. From the United mm -hmm. Left. And two journalists, partner, Mr. Williams, Nicola Williams from the Belgian radio RTBF. Hello. Hello. And Claudia Knopke, German journalist from AMS. Yeah, hello. Hello. So this big transatlantic trade and investment partnership, TTIP, to make it shorter, aims to create a huge freight trade area. It will bring to the European economy around 100 billion a year. It's quite a big and enormous deal. So what do you think uh, after all this um, Snowden data scandal, do the e does the EU still have to sign it? Oh, I, I think the relations between uh, the United States and the European Union are a little bit ambivalent, uh, to say it very frankly. Uh, because the NSA scandal, we, we didn't get any uh, concrete information what was going on. Um, there are not uh, conclusions to, to stop it between the, the US and uh, the member states of the European Union. And that's why we're thinking we have different approaches to enhance our uh, cooperation. And, uh, But how could mm -hmm. Obama gain the trust again from the Europeans? Not, I think, it's a um, trust last. Uh, sir, yes, he lost a lot of trust. Not only he, uh, but also the, the U.S. government, the U.S. institutions. Um, and uh, it's not possible to come now to Brussels and to say, okay, we, there was a little scandal. We have another culture concerning data protection in, in the USA and here in the, in, in the member states of uh, the European Union. But let, let's go forward. Let's go forward. I, I think it's not po possible only to say, yes, we can. Uh, Mr. Obama has to say more. He has to say uh, between um, partners uh, has to be a base of trust. And for this, we have to stop the surveillance, surveillance of data. Um, and of course, we have also problems concerning the TTIP, this um, transatlantic uh, tre uh, treaty trade and, and investment uh, partnership, because this is a partnership between the investors, between uh, the big, uh, the big bankers and banks yeah. and so on, and not between the people. So talk to me a bit about more this trade, it's trade pact. So it's not only about uh, uh, removing barriers to custom duties, yeah. but it's also about creating jobs. It will create um, jobs. But is it right? Uh, you can always you can say it's uh, good to create jobs, but you have to ask uh, first of all what kind of jobs, what quality of jobs. And uh, are these jobs in a way and a direction we, we, we will like it? Uh, if you see that this uh, TTIB is not going on to remove tariffs only, um, but it's only to, uh, it's also to, re to remove social and ecological standards, uh, then I have to ask uh, what kind of jobs? We need sustainable jobs. And not this kind of jobs uh, saying oh, we are not interested in labor law, we are not interested in, in the rights of the trade unions and so on. Uh, and uh, that's why I'm saying uh, this is a problem and it's a lobby or uh, partnership between uh, investors and not uh, between the people who are uh, uh, who are looking for uh, for jobs and for sustainable jobs mm, and focusing uh, more on citizens uh, directly mm. so claudia you have a question related to that for our yes guest? please i would like to know do you really think that this whole construction of ttip will come down to the people Does it really reach the basis? Mm -hmm. And uh, there, the talk is always about this great potential uh, of creating new jobs and giving benefits to even small and smaller business. So how can I imagine it really practically? So what might happen to the people? Um, it's... I think uh, the most impact of this TTIP is on the quality on jobs and it's on our environment and our standards. 
I'm, uh, I don't believe uh, that it will create a lot, a lot of new jobs. I don't believe it. This is a propaganda, and it's to, to make it easier for the people to accept this kind of uh, free trade agreement. Um, I'm, I'm sure they, tr they want to, to uh, uh, remove uh, barriers in, in social and environmental standards, and uh, they want also to, to create new markets, new markets, especially in, um, in, in public services. If you look to the treaties we have and to the standards we have in the European Union, um, you will see that there is a lot of potential to, to open it for the market. But uh, look to, to all the social public services and uh, look to, to water, uh, water and energy um, uh, if you want to provide it. If you will open it for the private sector, uh, you will have a lot of new, um, be new benefits for, for investors. And um, I think the majority of the people in the, in the member states is against it. Uh, two, two weeks or three weeks ago, um, more than 1 billion point uh, seven uh, million, uh, uh, million uh, signatures were collected uh, against water privatization in, in the uh, European um, initiative uh, citizens' initiative for right to water. Uh, that means the people don't want it. But now, with the TTIP, you will open it for the privatization. And I think this is not in the interest of the people. Mm. So, mm -hmm. so creating job, it's all about propaganda for you? Uh, yeah, most of all. Yes. It's, it's propaganda. And uh, in the end, if you look to, to uh, the other free trade agreements we have between the European Union and uh, the African the, uh, Caribbean and uh, Pacific states, or looking to, to Asia, um, you will see it's never in the interest of the people, never in the other region, no, nor in, in our region. It's in the interest of the investors. And um, we have also a new law, a new right for the investors to, to sue against uh, governments. Uh, if they don't um, accept um, or they want to, to change or decide about new rules, new social ri uh, rights or new minimum um, minimum uh, salaries, they can shoe, the, the investors can shoe against the governors, against uh, the states. And I, I, I'm, I think it's not right, it's not good to do so, that the investors are able to say what you will decide in your, your country. This is not allowed because it minimizes our benefits and we are against it. Okay. So another big point of uh, this deal is the cultural impact of it. That may interest a lot, a lot of uh, people as well. So Nicola, you've got a question as well. Yeah, yes, about the, the cultural exception. What do you think of the French position to kept out of the EU-US trade talks? Um, yes, I, I think uh, we should stop. We should stop it now. We should stop the TTIP just now in this moment. And not only that uh, some of the member states are saying we will, uh, we will make a break or we will go out. I think we should stop till the moment that we have concrete um, executions by, by the government of the USA to say, okay, we will stop our surveillance uh, of concerning the data. Uh, in the member states, uh, the data of the, gov uh, the governments and so on. And the next is to stop it uh, till we have another base for the negotiations. The base for the negotiations is not right. If you look to the mandate uh, for the European Union commissions and also for the US negotiators, uh, you will see that the mandate is not okay. The mandate is only directed in a way to, to bring the best benefit for the investors. To, uh, to guarantee the benefit for the investors, and this is not a direction for a good competition, for a good negotiation between, uh, to enhance the trade uh, conditions uh, between, the e between the EU and the US. And for you, a good condition is to uh, take off culture of, of, the, of the trade talks? 
Do you think culture yeah, is an uh, exception? Yeah, I, I think we should uh, we should change um, the main direction, the main goal, and we should also change the culture of such, such negotiations. Uh, why we don't uh, speak about to to enhance the rights of um, of the uh, of the people uh, working and especially in the automobile industry? If you look to to Germany. We have uh, with VW, with Opel, we have uh, enterprises uh, which are producing also on the American market. Uh, and if you look to the difference between the trade union rights in Germany and the trade union rights in the USA, you will see a big, big difference. Why we, we don't use this uh, negotiations to the TTIP also to demand better rules, better rights for, for the people, for the workers in uh, also in the USA, to have, uh, to have it on the same level. Uh, if, if you look to VW in, uh, in the USA, the, the, uh, the workers have not the right to create an own Betriebsrat, to, to create it. It's not possible to do it. And for this, I, I think we should uh, change the main behavior. We should change the political culture. So the culture so impact has to be mm. in the trade, uh, trade deal as well. So no, uh, he's coming, Mr. Obama, yeah. um, <laughs> today. And so the, here in Brussels, so the security is all around. So do you think the U.S. is, I mean, is trying to create a, a fear among uh, Europe and Europeans? Um. I, I see that we have a lot of controls um, and security measures in, in Brussels here, and uh, uh, we are invited as uh, presidents of the different political groups of the European Parliament to to come to the to the event tomorrow when he is speaking. Um, okay, uh, but I I think um, they have not only fear uh, in in. In Brussels or in other uh, countries in Europe, they they have so much security measures. They are only living in in an orbit, uh, controlled by by them. And um, I, I think they have not uh, concrete contact with the people, not not a concrete contact to learn more about the culture in Europe. And this this would be necessary. To, to have a concrete exchange of views or so. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure he is not coming into the European Parliament before. He is fearing uh, that the security measures are not enough in the European Parliament. Mm. And that's why, okay, if he is thinking that it's, not, that it's good not to speak in the European Parliament when he is here, okay, so this is his decision. And mm. if you manage to have two minutes a private meeting with Mr. Obama, <laughs> what will you ask him? Uh, two, two things. Uh, to, first of all, I would like to say stop NSA and uh, TTIP negotiations. And the next one, there is no no need to um, to to uh, um, to change um, the nuclear weapon arsenal in in Europe. They want to do it to renewal um, it till 2020. And they want to pay for this more than 10 billion billion dollar. And I think we don't need the nuclear weapon arsenal in Europe. Not in Germany, not in all the other member states of the European Union, not outside the European Union. Please uh, take your, your arsenal at home. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, one of you are going to make a selfie with Mr. Obama tomorrow. Of course. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you, Mrs. Zimmer? Thank you, too. <laughs> Bye, thank you. And thank you, uh, all of you, to follow us on Johannet Plus. See you next week. Bye.